Hi everybody, this is Lauren with Shabby Chic Sunday doing a quick tutorial for how I use Cricut Design Space to print and cut my PNG files that I have downloaded from the elements of a digital kit. You can use this method whether you are looking to make stickers or if you simply want your Cricut to cut out PNG files. The technique will be the same for both options. To prepare for this video, all I have done is download the ephemera images from the elements file of my digital collection, which is the Quilting Circle by Shabby Art Boutique, so the images are already readily available. I have a new blank canvas open in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to begin by clicking Upload on the bottom left toolbar, then I'll scroll up to Upload Image. Then I'm going to click this green button that says Browse, and this is going to open up to all the saved PNG files that I have downloaded to my computer. I'll scroll through to find the one I want, and I'm going to hit Open. And Continue. Apply and Continue. Click Flat Graphic, Continue. And then finally, Upload. And this will go ahead and deposit our PNG file right into our canvas in a moment. And then you're going to have two options if you want to create a sticker or click offset. And guess what? They do the exact same thing. So it's going to automatically set it at 0.25 inches. You can also use this toggle tool here to choose the amount of space that you want around your image or type in the width. So you can see right now at 0.25, we have quite a bit of white space on the edge of our image. My go-to is to use 0.025, so I'll type that and hit apply. You can see the dark black is neatly around the edges of the stamp, nice and close, and that is marking where the Cricut blade is going to cut. If I had left it at 0.25, there would have been a whole box of white around this stamp, not intricate cuts. I want to get rid of this black border here, so I'll go up to my color square. I'm going to click white. I'm going to then highlight my image, and that is the last step before we hit flatten, which is over here in the bottom right corner. Flatten just compresses all the layers together into one printable layer, so it's going to make sure that the machine cuts out only the outer edge that you have selected of the combined image. Let's do another one. Click upload again, upload image. And you do have another option where it says drag file here or browse. So let's do drag file here. I'm going to go ahead and slide Cricut Design Space over. I'm going to open up where I have my elements saved. And I'm going to scroll down to find, let's, let's do this um, quilt around a child. So I'll go ahead and download this to my computer. Right now it's just in my Google Drive and I want to download it to my actual computer. Up on the toolbar, you'll see this arrow, and it's going to tell me that my image has been downloaded. You don't even need to open it up. You can just click right on here, grab it, and drag it to this box. So I'll slide this over so it can be our main screen again, and then I'm going to click Continue, Apply, and Continue, Flat Graphic, Continue, and then over on the left side, you do have the option if you want to name your image or even leave tags. Um, if you have multiple images from the same kit, you can even make a collection for it. But I usually just leave it the way it is and click Upload. We're going to go ahead and repeat the process again. So let's slide her over and go to Offset. And again, you can type in the width that you would like or you can use this toggle key. Let's go ahead and try that out. We'll make our spacing wider like a sticker since our stamp was intricate. Click Apply. And now you're going to see that there's this little blemish here on the upper left corner. There's a way to remove this. So we're going to click our main image. Let's go ahead and move her to the right. I want to select that black shadow, go to Operations, and click Basic. Now I'm going to go to my left side of my toolbar here and I want to open a shape. It really doesn't matter which one you select, but I seem to always pick the circle. I'm going to put my circle right over that blemish. I'm going to highlight those, go to the bottom right, and I want to click this button that says Slice. It is going to cut out anything that is behind my shape. You're going to click each of the circles and hit Delete. Then you're going to go back up under Operations again. We want to change it from Basic Cut back to Print Then Cut. We want to change the gray to white. And then I'm going to grab my image, and you can see how she's tucked behind, so we don't want that. You're going to right click, hit send to back, and now the sticker part is behind the girl. I'm going to highlight her and the sticker, 
go to align and hit center. That's going to perfectly center it on your sticker part so that you don't have to do the guesswork about where center is. We're going to highlight her and hit flatten. Now you can size her any size that you would like. The last thing I'm going to show you today is how to add text over an element that you've uploaded. So bottom left corner again, let's hit upload, upload image, and let's move this over again so I can look through all of my elements to pick which one I would like. I'm going to go with this embroidery hoop, so I want to download it to my computer. Again, this is just in my Google Drive right now. I'm going to wait for my download arrow to show me that it's ready. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it in the upload box. Okay, so here's our blank hoop. I'm going to hit continue and go through all these silly steps again. Flat graphic, continue. Again, you can name it if you would like and then hit upload. So now I have my third image on my canvas and let's move this over here. We're going to follow the exact same steps that we just did. So let's hit offset. I'm going to do my go-to, which is 0 0.025. That's what I always like to use. I want to change from black to white so that there's no border that is printed out around my image. And I'm going to highlight it and click flatten in the bottom right corner. Okay, so now to add the text, go to your far left side on the toolbar and hit text. And uh, Cricut Sans is what it is right now. I want to go ahead and change that. So on the top of your toolbar, you'll see text. I'm going to go to bookmarks because this is where I have all my favorite fonts saved. And let's pick this one. I'll link a video in the description box for how to download free fonts. I'm going to double click the text so that I'm able to highlight it and alter it to type the text that I want. And we're going to type friends. And I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it right over the center of my image. Sometimes the text will go behind your image, and if that happens, just right click and then you're going to hit send to back. And that will move your font to the front and your image behind. Then you can grab the corners here and you can enlarge it to fit however you would like. You can also go up to your color tool and you can change the font color. You can also go under operations and you can click pen or score or foil or deboss or engrave. And those are other options too if you don't want it just to print flat on your image. But once you're satisfied, highlight it like we've been doing. Go over to the bottom right hand corner. I want to attach my words to my image and now I'm ready to print. So first it's going to require us to hit save. So we'll name it quilts, hit save. Okay, project saved successfully. Go to the far right, hit make and here is showing us how it is going to print out. Bottom right hand corner, we'll click continue. And then I'm gonna send it to my printer because I wanna print and then cut. We'll hit next, it's just showing you how it's gonna print. And before I hit print, I wanna hit use system dialog. This allows us to determine our print quality. Now the screen usually pops up behind our Cricut Design Space and there it is. And I want to scroll down until I see printer options and then I want to hit print settings. I want to make sure I have the right paper setting and then change my print quality to quality. Hit OK and now I'm ready to hit the print button. But I'm actually going to click cancel because I am not ready to print yet. I just made this for the sake of the video. So I hope that that was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Take care.